continue to bless me even though I don't deserve all of the things you've done for me yes you continue continue to bless me in spite of all Oh, yeah. 
Good afternoon, church. God is good. And all the time. This is the day that the Lord has made. And let us give him a clap of praise. Your safety is our number one priority at the Church on the Hill. We provide hand sanitizing stations and an air purification system. Wearing of the mask is optional. There are a few tickets available for the Women's Ministry Martin Luther King Breakfast on Monday, January the 15th. The doors are opening at 8 o'clock. Please see one of the um, members of the Women's Ministry for a ticket. As we prepare to celebrate this afternoon, we would like to welcome all of our virtual and in-person visitors. Can we have a clap of welcome? <laughs> Speak, Lord, for your servant is listening. On this second Sunday in Ordinary Time, we celebrate the legacy of Dr. Martin Luther King, Jr. God calls to us in unexpected ways. For young Samuel, it was his whispered name he heard in the night. For Dr. King, it was the injustice and racism he witnessed daily. Through their encounter with the Lord, they were led to live lives of witness and service. May our encounters with the Lord here and elsewhere guide the way we live our lives as well. May we stand now as we begin the celebration of the holy sacrifice of the Mass.
In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Peace be with you. And with your spirit. Your Eminence, on behalf of this wonderful people, and the parishioners of Our Lady of Perpetual Help, the Church in the Hill, I happily welcome you to your home, to your parish, as we celebrate the annual Mass for the legacy of Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King, Jr., a man who had a dream, a man who always kept his promises. Your Eminence, thank you for appointing me to this parish, this young kid from Lagos. Thank you for allowing me to dream and to share the joy and the warmth of the people of God. In a special way also, in a special way I also welcome you, Your Excellency, uh, Bishop Roy Campbell, for your generosity. Thank you for being here. And to all of you, welcome to the Church on the Hill. Father Cornelius, I'm just glad that the Josephites let you stay in town. <laughs> Dear brothers and sisters, as we gather this evening to praise God's name and to thank him for the gift of Martin, let us ask for the gift of the Father's forgiveness. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and what I have failed to do. Through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask Blessed Mary, ever virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life.
peace to people of goodwill. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth, peace to people of goodwill. Praise you, Lord God, heavenly King, God Almighty Father. Peace to people of goodwill. Glory to God in the highest and on earth. Peace to people of goodwill. Peace to people of goodwill. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth, peace to people of goodwill. Let us pray. Almighty, ever living God, who govern all things, both in heaven and on earth. Mercifully hear the pleading of your people and bestow your peace on our times. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. A reading from the first book of Samuel. Samuel was sleeping in the temple of the Lord where the ark of God was. The Lord called to Samuel who answered, Here I am. Samuel ran to Eli and said, Here I am, you called me. I did not call you, Eli said. Go back to sleep. So he went back to sleep. Again the Lord called Samuel who rose and went to Eli. Here I am, he said, you called me. But Eli answered, I did not call you, my son. Go back to sleep. At the same time, Samuel was not familiar with the Lord, because the Lord had not revealed anything to him as yet. The Lord called Samuel again for the third time. Getting up and going to Eli, he said, Here I am, you called me. Then Eli understood that the Lord was calling the youth. So he said to Samuel, Go to sleep. And if you are called, reply, Speak, Lord, for your servant is listening. When Samuel went to sleep in his place, the Lord came and revealed his presence, calling out as before, Samuel, Samuel. Samuel answered, Speak, for your servant is listening. Samuel grew up, and the Lord was with him, not permitting any word of of his to be without effect. The word of the Lord.
have waited, waited for the Lord, and he stooped toward me and heard my cry, and he put a new song into my mouth, a hymn to our God. Oh, Lord. not, but he is open to obedience you gave me, holocaust of sin offerings you sought not, then said I, behold, behold, I come, oh Lord. In the written scroll, it is prescribed, prescribed for me to do your will. Oh, my God is my delight, and your law is within my heart. Oh, Lord. I announced your justice in the vast assembly. I did not restrain, I did not restrain my lips as you, O Lord, know. A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. 
Brothers and sisters, the body is not for immorality, but for the Lord. And the Lord is for the body. God raised the Lord and will also raise us by his power. Do you not know that your bodies are members of Christ? But whoever is joined to the Lord becomes one spirit with him. Avoid immorality. Every other sin a person commits is outside the body. But the moral person sins against his own body. Do you not know that your body is a temple of the Holy Spirit within you, whom you have from God, and that you are not your own? For you have been purchased at a price. Therefore, glorify God in your body. The word of the Lord. With you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. John was standing with two of his disciples. And as he watched Jesus walk by, he said, Behold the Lamb of God. The two disciples heard what he had said and followed Jesus. Jesus turned and saw them following him and said to them, What are you looking for? They said to him, Rabbi, which translated means teacher. Where are you staying? He said to them, come and you will see. So they went and saw where Jesus was staying, and they stayed with him that day. It was about four in the afternoon. Andrew, the brother of Simon Peter, was one of the two who heard John and followed Jesus. He first found his own brother Simon and told him, we have found the Messiah, which is translated Christ. Then he brought him to Jesus. Jesus looked at him and said, 
you are Simon, the son of John. You will be called Cephas, which is translated Peter. And the gospel of the Lord. I love coming to Our Lady of Perpetual Help, the Church on the Hill. I have to tell you a secret. My first assignment as a new priest was at Our Lady of Perpetual Help in Glenview, Illinois. So I like to follow this woman wherever she goes. Just a few short weeks ago, Catholics the world over celebrated the Christmas feast of the Holy Innocents, those unnamed and countless toddlers who were killed in order for Herod to make sure that the child Jesus would never reach maturity. We consequently have no idea of the number or the names of those little ones that today we honor as the martyred saints whom the church now calls the holy innocents. Nonetheless, we do know the names and the number of the innocent children who were brutally murdered as a defining part of the civil rights movement at the 16th Street Baptist Church in Birmingham, Alabama, in 1963. Addie Mae Collins, Cynthia Wesley, Carol Robertson, and Denise McNair were the victims of indiscriminate hatred on Sunday morning, September 15, 1963. Those four young girls were then at a very tender age when their lives were taken in a horrendous act of bloodshed. The nation had already heard of and been stunned by the news of the assassination of many other adult victims of racial hatred and violence, including that of Medgar Evers earlier that same year. But there is something transfixing about the violent death of a child. Our hearts still ache at the memory of the vicious deaths of the little ones from Newtown, Connecticut, Uvalde, Texas, Parkland High School in Florida, and in far too many other places in our nation from the more recent past. The death of children anywhere ought to stun us. We have grown too accustomed to the frequent acts of horror that struck down schools and shut down schools and public places because a deranged individual has attacked a community location once thought to be safe and secure and the sheer number of aborted babies worldwide is just staggering. 60 years ago, those four youngsters' brutal deaths were a powerful force that compelled the U.S. Congress finally to take legislative action that led to the Civil Rights Bill of 1964. In that sense, their murder was a sacrificial offering that advanced justice 
for all of us. Today, those youngsters would now be in their 70s. Most likely, they would have become wives and mothers, and today might well be grandmothers. Their deaths brought such thoughts to a premature end. As we observe Dr. King's annual memorial this year, we pause once again to recall his always riveting words of a dream that must challenge us all to examine the content of our own characters. That famous reference was never intended to be simply a hope or even a fantasy or just a suggestion. It was a challenge for all of us, no matter what our age, race, or ethnic heritage. Our personal character all need development and the constant attention that they so rightly deserve. Our character is the very gatehouse of the virtues that we must possess. Our character is the foundation of our integrity. Dr. King admonished all Americans to long for the day when each one of us would be judged not by our skin color, not by the land of our origin, not by our age or gender, not by our first spoken language, or political opinion, or IQ, or any other defining attribute, but ultimately only by our character and our human integrity. Those four young girls never had the opportunity to bring their character to full flower. But the memory of their premature deaths encourage all of us to develop our own character according to the highest principles of our nation and our religious heritage. It is not enough for us simply to pause today and to recall the tragic loss of four young lives. We are all prodded to take up Dr. King's admonition and his warning that we live lives of integrity that are capable of withstanding the withering scrutiny of public examination, as well as the even more perfect summons of God himself, who, as the first reading reminds us, calls each of us repeatedly, incessantly, and by name. The ultimate goal of the US Civil Rights Movement was to establish a society of justice wherein people would be judged by the only criteria that ever truly matters, the state of heart and soul of a person, and not by mere appearance. Dr. King himself paid the ultimate price of real leadership, as have countless others, not only in the civil rights movement, but also in all those struggles that have been waged for human dignity everywhere. Only a few short weeks ago, people throughout our nation paused to honor the great legacy of Rosalind Carter, who had elevated the office of First Lady to new heights through her champion, championing of the mental health needs of our citizens and so many other social programs. Dr. King himself was certainly a disciple of the Lord, like those very first ones called to follow him from today's passage from St. John's Gospel. The meaning of that unforgettable phrase, the content of their character, is a continuing path that we must all follow, from the very young to those who are more advanced in years. As we honor Dr. King during these next few days, we reflect in gratitude on all those who have given true light and true significance to those words. 
And today, we must recommit ourselves to living lives of harmony, integrity, compassion, justice, peace, charity, faith, so that our own character might serve to inspire another generation of Americans, no matter what their age or background. Or in truth, it was the good example of those others who have brought us this far by faith. Amen. The people of Our Lady of Perpetual Help, along with all of the many guests and friends who assemble here this weekend, enjoy one faith. We profess that one faith together. I believe in one God, Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. And by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered, died, and was buried. And he rose again on the third day, in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in joy to judge the living and the dead. His kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, with the Father and the Son is gored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess my baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Dearest brothers and sisters, as members of a single family and united in fraternal spirit, let us present our needs and the needs of all of our brothers and sisters to our God who shows us always a father's care for everyone. For Pope Francis, Cardinal Gregory, and all the clergy with the people entrusted to their charge, that they may be prophets of human dignity and justice, let us pray to the Lord. for all civil leaders, that they may work for the dignity of the human person to be respected in word, deed, and law. Let us pray to the Lord. For those who recall the examples and words of Martin Luther King Jr that they may always strive for a world of peace, justice, respect, and charity for all peoples. Let us pray to the Lord. For all who live in places suffering from violence and war, especially Ukraine and the Holy Land, that they may be kept safe and that peace may return to their homes. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord hear our For the 
the souls of the faithful departed, that they may know the glory of the resurrection. Let us pray to the Lord. No. And for those four young women who suffered death and gave an example that moved the nation for their families and loved ones who still grieve their loss, we pray to the Lord. O oh God, who have revealed that peacemakers are to be called your children, Grant, we pray, that we may work without ceasing to establish that justice which alone ensures true and lasting peace, through Christ our Lord.
say, sisters and brothers, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord set sacrifice in your name, for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the laws of the Holy Church. Grant us, O Lord, we pray, that we may participate worthily in these mysteries. For whenever the memorial of this sacrifice is celebrated, the work of our redemption is accomplished through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, <coughs> Holy Father, almighty and eternal God. For we know it belongs to your boundless glory that you came to the aid of mortal beings with your divinity and even fashioned for us a remedy out of mortality itself so that the cause of our downfall might become the means of our salvation through Christ our Lord. Amen. Through him, the host of angels adores your majesty and rejoices in your presence forever. May our voices, we pray, join with theirs in one chorus of exultant praise as we acclaim. <laughs> indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy, and you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In 
a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray upon the oblation of your church, and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself, Grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, and blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, with St. Hilary and all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth with your servant, Francis, our Pope, and Wilton, our Bishop, the other bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Lord, listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned here before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers, to our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, Give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory. Through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, the unity of the Holy Spirit, All glory and honor is yours forever and ever.
the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace, I leave you. My peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer to one another the sign of Christ's peace. of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. The
Let us pray. Pour on us, O Lord, the spirit of your love, and in your kindness make those you have nourished by this one heavenly bread one in mind and heart, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Good evening. Good evening. Your Eminence, Cardinal Gregory, thank you for celebrating this liturgy today in remembrance and commemoration of the le legacy of the Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King, Jr. Thank you. Your Excellency Bishop Campbell, we thank you for your presence today, for your leadership in ministry, and for always being with us as well. Thank you. I would also, in a very special way, like to thank Father Cornelius, a relatively new pastor here at Our Lady of Perpetual Help. It is wonderful to be here in a special way as a housewarming for you in your new parish. And thank you to the Our Lady of Perpetual Help community for welcoming us so warmly. Thank you. In our Office of Cultural Diversity and Outreach at the Archdiocese of Washington, it is always our pleasure to worship and celebrate with our culturally diverse communities and in a special way celebrating the legacy of Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. in this moment in time brings us much gratitude. So thank you for joining us this evening. Thank you. Thank you. I get to provide a very special invitation. Father Cornelius is hoping a, a brief, hosting a brief gathering following mass, immediately following mass in the panorama room. So please do plan to join us. Thank you. It falls to me also to recognize and to thank Wendy who does such a wonderful job of bringing together our wonderfully diverse communities of faith. Thank you. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. This celebration is ended. Let us go in peace to love and serve the Lord and one another. Thanks be to God. Thank you.